One of the things that we're very familiar with as Muslims that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have already decreed for each and every one of us his rizq. So whatever rizq and provision that it is decided for you, you will have it. And that's something already connected to you before even you come to this dunya. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, when you're still in your mother womb, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already take, took care of your rizq, that he will send an angel to write down what kind of provision that you will receive in this life. And also Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam said in the hadith which is authentic, if a son of Adam run away from the provision that Allah have decided for him, like the way you run from death, your provision will catch up with you, and like the death will catch up with you as well. In another word, you will never die. And there is one cent was decided for you, you didn't receive it yet. So what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have decided for you, you will receive it. But it's a unique concept. This rizq will not come without you taking the means and taking the steps that it will lead you to receive that provision that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have promised and made for you. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, walk in the earth seeking the provision and consume what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have provided to you. And don't, don't forget the end Allah said that you will return to him. One of the common dua, Allahumma la mani'a lima a'tayt wa la mu'tiya lima mana'at. Whatever ya Allah, you promise to give or you're giving, nobody can prevent it. And whatever you hold back, nobody can give. Our rizq, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Dariyat, that your provision in the heavens, يعني, it is written with the Lord of the heavens and the earth. It is absolutely true. When a, a person heard that, he said, who made Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala angry that he needed to make an oath and to swear by saying, by Allah, it is true. Al-Hasan al-Basri rahimahullah commented in this verse by saying, always we found those who seek the akhirah, the dunya come to them. But we never heard of someone was seeking dunya and the akhirah came to them. That's why Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when you woke up in the morning and your big concern is just that risk, that money, that wealth, the worldly things, you will always feel like you need to catch up. The Prophet ﷺ said, and those who in the morning, that their akhirah is biggest concern. You know, when you wake up late, your biggest concern that you were late for fajr. Your biggest concern that, you know, I don't have enough time to read my Quran today. Versus, you wake up in the morning, I'm late for a job. And this is your biggest concern. What you wake up in the morning and the biggest concern, what's the update, what's the email, what's my boss said, what's the report said. It's a big difference between the two attitudes. And in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if the one who the akhirah is biggest, his biggest concern, the dunya will come to him. But that, as I said, it does not mean that we don't seek the means that it will bring provision for us. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala want us to be strong, want us to be rich. In Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to make a dua in Sahih Muslim in a, in a constant base, Allahumma inni as'aluka al-huda wal-tuqa wal-afafa wal-ghina. That in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam part of his dua, Ya Allah make me rich. So I'm not in, in need of anyone. It is the best thing that you will be the upper hand, the giver, not just the taker. There is no doubt about that. So many times when we talk about the means that in, increase your risk and provision, we only focus on materialistic means. And I'm not denying that this is natural. You think about materialistic things or very clear points, you know, economists and, and people who have background in business will tell you if you want to improve your income to, you know, do one, two, three. But also Sharia told us that there is other reasons 
bring blessings to your income. It increases your risk. And that's something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided for you. When you do that, Allah put more barakah in whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving you. And nothing can bless the wealth and the money that in your hand, like being among Ahlul Tawheed. And their hearts is always attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. They never look to any other than Allah. They never depend on a creation. They never felt that their provision in the hand of any human being or any creation. In Surah Al-A'raf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, if the people of the village or the city have iman and taqwa, Allah will open the gates of blessing from the sky and from the land, from above them and underneath of them. That will bring a lot of blessings to them. But the condition is that they have iman and they have taqwa. Al-Quran didn't speak about the materialistic things because this is something you can figure it in your own. But the Quran is a book of guidance, not a book of finance, not a book of business. He wants to connect you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while you are seeking that, the, the thing that is a very materialistic, which is money and wealth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, order your family to pray and be patient with that. It takes a while until you train your family member to commit themselves to pray on time. And he said, we're not asking you any provision. The provision comes from us to you and the one who possesses the taqwa who will have the best end. One of the scholars said, we never heard of someone committed himself to this verse ever became poor. وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهِ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا وَيَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ Those who have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah bring to them a provision from where they didn't expect. Here in this masjid, a young man came to me and he said, Shaykh, he was about to do something haram, a business which is not allowed. And I told him, have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fear Allah azza wa jal and think twice about it is much better to please your wife who forcing you, it was his wife actually, in his back to buy a house in a way that he believes it's absolutely haram and to involve in a business that he knows absolutely it's haram. And he said, she's putting so much pressure on me. I said, who you will have taqwa from more? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or your wife? Then he said, Allah azza wa jal. And I said, just tell your wife that, that both of us, if we fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than poverty, if we fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than anyone else, and we do what we know and we believe is correct and right, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never put us down. Less than four months, he came back to me and he told me, they came to his land, one of the contractor, and put a huge load of sand. And they offered him to put that sand in his land. And guess what? They gave him about a quarter million dollars just to put that sand in his land. And he said, Sheikh didn't stop here. Well, after they put that mountain of sand, which made my land very beautiful, in the area there is a developer who came and started purchasing the sand from me. He said, Wallahi, the trucks will come from this door to basically unload the sand and I will let it go from the other door. This way it comes with money, goes out with another amount of money. And he made about a million dollars that year. And this is just not a, a single story. There is so many. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even sometimes the ata, not necessarily to be a money. It could be a satisfaction in your heart. But if you do this because you do it for the sake of more money to come, you're not doing it for Allah. You're doing it for the reward. Someone said, Shaykh, I tried it, I didn't get any money. Yeah, because you did it for the money. You didn't do it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you do it sincerely for Allah Azza Jal, Allah will never put you down. Also, one of the things that bring provision and, and increase our provision, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, He told His people, Nuh, seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgiveness. Say, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. What will happen? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send the rain, which will bring basically the... Uh, let your uh, land grow and he will provide you with wealth and children and jannat gardens and rivers qala an nabiy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam those who say a lot of astaghfirullah the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said allah will bring ease to them from every 
difficulty that they're going through. And an exit from every situation that they feel that they are stuck in it. And will bring them a provision from where they never expected. Also, one of the things that we found in the Quran, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, those who put their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is their sufficient. If you put your tawakkul and trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way it should be, He will provide for you. Like the birds, they leave in the morning, empty stomach, and they go back to their nests where their belly is filled. Also, a Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us something interesting. He said, those who would like to increase their provision, have more of uh, 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 income, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase their life, that person should always be connected with his or dutiful to his kinship. Your family. We only know the brothers, the sisters, the parents, the grandparents, and yani, the uncles maybe. But we don't even go farther. Especially those who have family overseas or live in another state. You will find that they don't know each other. They don't even know the names of their cousins. You know, I, my own experience, I ask a lot of kids, who's your grandparents are? They don't know. They don't know their names. And I, I'm telling you, I tried this. You tried with any one of the kids around you and ask them about their distance relatives. They don't know any one of them. One of the things that increase your provision a lot, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Saba, whatever you spend for the sake of Allah, Allah not only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you a replacement for it in the dunya and in the akhirah. And He is the best provider. Qala tabaraka wa ta'ala kama fil hadith al-sahih. Son of Adam, spend, I will spend on you. And Abu Hurair radiallahu an said, I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa saying, every day the Prophet sallallahu said that an angel making dua said, Oh Allah, give those who giving a replacement and destroy the wealth of those who held back. The Prophet sallallahu once approached Bilal. And we know Bilal is not the richest companion. He said to him, Qala ya Bilal, give and don't ever fear poverty. The Lord of the throne will not hold back from you. Also, a Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, continuously offer Hajj and Umrah. They will take away your sin and your poverty like the way the fire take away that when you put the iron sticks on the, into the fire and you purify it, that's how the Umrah and Hajj will purify you from these two, sins and poverty. It increase your wealth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said in Surah An-Nur, if they are poor, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them from His provision. Those who seek marriage and they don't have wealth. They don't have enough wealth. And here something you have to uh, pay attention to it. When Al-Ulama rahimahullah said that marriage increase your wealth, statistically speaking, in every study that I come across, saying that marriage lead to high income. Even there is a study to compare between those who have marital relationship versus uh, a relationship but not based on marriage, like a boyfriend, girlfriend living together in the United States. If you look at all the studies shows, those who are married, they have higher income than those who are not, even if they still have a relationship. And that's something very unique, by the way. It's the opposite of some people today want someone to come to get married and they want him to be super rich. I mean, a young man just graduated from college. You know, he has a base. He has, you know, enough income to start a life, to rent a house, to rent an apartment. He doesn't need to start his life by having, you know, a $300,000 house. That's not uh, correct. The right course of action that someone, even if he's not rich, but he have enough to start alive, that the person that should be encouraged and should not fear poverty. Because the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said, three people, Allah made a promise that He will take care of them financially. Number one, the slave that He tried to free himself. Number two, the one who is seeking knowledge and he doesn't have enough income or doesn't have enough money. The third one, someone to get married to protect his uh, chest. One of the things that also very effective and increase your wealth at dua. 
And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam told Abu Umama, do you want me to teach you things if you say it? Allah will take care of your worries and will help you to take care of your debts. He said, Ya Rasulullah, absolutely yes. What is it? He said, every day and every morning say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hamm wal hazan wa a'udhu bika min al-ajz wal kasal wa a'udhu bika min al-jubni wal bukhl wa a'udhu bika min ghalabat al-dayn wa qahr al-rijal. Abu Umama said, I was in so much debt. And I kept saying this day and night. And he said, and Allah my witness, in short period of time, I paid all my debts off. A dua, one of the great reasons for you to be rich. Hada dua, who sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Allah, stretch your blessings, your mercy, your fadl, your provision upon us. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in between the two sujood, he used to say what? Allahumma arhamni, waghfirli, warzuqni, wahdini. Kama fi sunani Abi Dawood. One of the also reasons that help to bless your provision and to increase your, your provision, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Ibrahim, Allah made a promise that if you are grateful to Allah, He will increase you. He will give you more. To be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your tongue, you say whatever blessing that you have, alhamdulillah. Don't be kafur, said, oh, I am bad shape, I'm this, I'm that. Whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you even if a little bit, say, alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may Allah increase our wealth and be grateful and thankful to Him. One of the meaning of being grateful to Allah that you use this wealth in the right way. You use this wealth not to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the money that He gave you. Qala Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, being grateful to Allah, gratefulness, being shakur, it's like a shackle. That basically you put it in any ni'mah, any blessing, anything that Allah gave it to you, and you want to keep it, just make sure that you be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said, Oh Allah, bless the early day of my ummah. Al-ulama said those who uh, uh, seek the provision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the early time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless them. By the way, this is like as a concept. It doesn't mean if you have a night shift, you're in trouble. No, that's not what the, the point is. Don't be lazy. The point is that you be active. You don't just lay asleep the whole day and, you know, stay in your place and say, oh, there is no risk coming to me. You should be active. When people come to me and say, I have a problem. You need to start looking for a new career. You need to move. Maybe you need to change your place. You need to be actively looking for the risk, not to be lazy. So being active, one of the reasons for the risk to happen to you. One of the things that you should always remember, that to stay away from sins. The Prophet ﷺ said, some provision will be prevented from you because of your sins. And finally, be satisfied with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's gifts and provision for you. al qanaa it means... The opposite of greed. Uh, al qanaa it doesn't being satisfied and being happy with that Allah provides. It doesn't mean that you don't look forward to increase. But you look forward to improve your life while you are happy with what you have. That's the difference. But if you look forward to improve because you're not happy with what you have, that's not how the believer is. And if you can see the difference between them, you will understand the concept of al qanaa فَإِنَّ النَّبِيَّ صلى الله عليه وسلم said, success achieved by the person who believed, who submit himself to Allah, who whatever little bit comes to him, he will be happy with it. He will not be angry at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you can, as I said, move on and increase your wealth as much as you want, but with the condition that you're always happy with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provide you. Ibn Abbas was heard standing between al-rukun and al-maqam right in front of al kaaba And he was making this dua. Ya Allah, make me be satisfied with whatever you provide for me. Bless whatever you give me. And whatever I miss, I couldn't have. Bring me something else better than it. What an inspiration. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those successful in this dunya and the akhirah. Allahumma ghfir lana warhamna wa'afina wa'afu anna wa'ahdina wa'akrimna.